Welcome back to Let's Play Ill Bleed. Last time, we were exploring a spooky abandoned lumber mill, chasing after a cranky appendage, and trying to find where Randy had gotten off to. Confirming defrost. Turbo in full gear. Number 106 entering skinning stage. Okay, 106 has been skinned. Oh, a human skinning machine. Lovely. Yes, so it seems that this mill isn't so abandoned after all, as this skinning machine is still up and running, and an endless supply of corpses are being dropped down from above to be run through this process. Now, we could just leave through that door, but the sleeping woodcutter up here has something that we need. And sure, why not pickpocket the large axe-wielding man for a piece of tinder? And it's time for our first battle with the woodcutter. Uh, woodcutters are the toughest kind of enemy in this stage. They can take a lot of hits, and they have a large range with their axes. Uh, yeah, Michelle's axe seems pretty inadequate in comparison. It would seem that the larger axe the woodcutter is carrying would be more likely to have been Jason's, but Arwell's do Arwell uh, will do the job fine. Uh, now the strategy against the woodcutter is pretty much the same strategy that we've used against all of the enemies so far. Uh, you strike twice, run around behind the woodcutter, strike twice again. The woodcutters can be a little more erratic than previous enemies though. Uh, they have different types of swings that have different ranges, and they can also charge at you and swing. It doesn't seem like you can really predict which, which attack is coming, so it's likely that you'll take a few hits in a woodcutter encounter. And uh, watch out here because there is a trap right here when you enter the room. Now, let's follow this conveyor belt to see where those skinned corpses are being hauled off to. Any guesses? Any guesses on we what's being done with the skinned corpses? Body assembly line open. Body assembly line open. Lumber coating angle adjusted. Shoulder width. Yes, the corpses are turned into wood puppets. Mystery solved! But, hold on now, Randy seemed very much alive when we saw him, so it seems that one doesn't actually have to be dead to be turned into a wood puppet. And yes, skinned corpses that have been hung with care. Something here doesn't seem to like humans very much. And here's a small area that requires you to have saved up some adrenaline, as there's a bunch of traps all packed together.
and that was our first time seeing death from health reaching zero. Uh, maybe we'll die the other two ways later on. But up here is an important item that is completely optional to take. No, no, I didn't mean you, Mr. Wood Puppet. Now, I think uh, the type of wood puppets we fight are the types that uh, have the skin corpses inside, as they don't speak. Uh, Randy was making a lot of noise. If these wood puppets are dead, though, I don't know what's animating them. But, of course, this does uh, solve the mystery of why they spew blood, which uh, freak people out ironically, uh, because there are indeed corpses inside of them. Now this is the item I meant, Randy's brain. So Randy wasn't just turned into a wood puppet, but his brain was removed as well. His brain was removed as well and left lying around in a crate. So that would explain why his yelling earlier was just a lot of gibberish. It would also explain why the intro said that the wood puppets that were mailed to the families of the vanished workers ran about crazily and didn't speak, as they would have had their brains removed as well. Uh, so it looks like that for this attraction, Michael Reynolds was actually going to go through with the premise here and mail the brainless Randy Wood Puppet to his family. That really would be some amazing viral marketing. Up here, we've got a hatch and a control panel with an oddly shaped indentation in it. But I think that we do have something that will fit into that. Good thing we took that stick from the woodcutter earlier, even though Michelle had no way of knowing that it would turn out to be a key. And yes, if we didn't take it here, uh, we'd have to backtrack to that room at this point. Do we want to use our pin? Well, the problem is that we don't have a pin. Uh, but we do have another apparently useless item that it turns out we have to use here. The memo we picked up earlier has a four-digit number, 3221. But this is not the pin, because it'll bleed is on to you, and assumes that if you're enjoying this game that you can't do basic multiplication. So 3221, uh, we're bought at $3 a piece, which means the pin is 9663, IR smart. Listen up, my woodcutting slaves. You'd better be careful when you start tossing those humans in here. It's easy to slip, and then... Wham! You'll be a wood puppet, too. I don't think you'd like that now. Well, that was apparently the boss of this mill. And he said that this is the machine that makes wood puppets that we're standing on? Yeah, he did say that. And now this is the part of the game where we do something that could not seem like a good idea to anyone at all in this situation.